Good morning to all the members of the H and A family. This topic uh, was allocated to me last week, this week in the starting of the week, and I thought that uh, it is a good topic to take because people may be having uh, some misconceptions, some challenges, and this presentation may help us to get out of that. As we understand from the management books, delegation is an essential skill to grow. Grow self, grow the organization also. So we will start this discussion by asking some of you to share with us what is your expectation from today? So you have two choices. One, you can unmute and speak. Second, you can also put it in the chat. So can I ask uh, two of the team leads, the people who are leading small, small teams, can they share what their expectation from the group is, from this discussion is? It can be voluntary. Otherwise, I will pick the people. But I can't make out everybody here. Who is a team lead? Who is a chartered accountant manager? OK, I can see some here. Asha. Asha, Jane and Avantika, can you share? What is what is it that you expect from today's discussion? Sir, actually, I'm traveling. I'm writing in the chat box. OK, please put it in the chat box. Not a problem. Avantika also can uh, unmute and speak. Uh, sir, I'm traveling. I'll put it in the chat box. Yeah, yeah, put it, put it. Shilpi says points to take care of while delegating jobs. OK. That is, uh, yeah, I'm going to look at that, possibly look at some of the common errors uh, we have made or maybe continuing to make while delegating work. I'm certainly going to take that, Shilpi. Team leads also can uh, yeah, unmute and speak. I can't make out. Uh, Shilpi, can you make out who is the team lead in uh, Hyderabad? I could make out qualified. Mahadev, you can share. I have written, sir. So on the chat, I have written is sometimes uh, I feel that it is better to do a job myself rather than uh, delegating it. Correct. After yes. I sometimes I realize that actually they could have done that. So how to handle that situation is something which yes. I am against. Yeah, this requires a bit of trust, but I will. I am dealing with that. That's also one of the uh, problems which is there. Sometimes uh, we have some doubts about the juniors, whether they are capable, whether they'll give it in time, whether you'll have to redo it. I'm going to touch on that. Anybody sir, else? Uh, sir, Rashmi here. Yeah. Uh, we uh, sometimes we'll delegate, sir. Uh, we'll take that step of delegation, but uh, it would not be up to the mark how we'll be expecting. Uh, rather than redoing uh -huh, quality, uh, rather than doing, how can we, do, after delegation, how can we monitor or give input so that we need not redo? So that yeah. area, if we are able to cover today. Yes, I will cover that. Yeah. Saurabh says that how to identify which person is good for which job. Yeah, you should know, you know your team and uh, maybe you should evaluate once in a way, some way, some methods of trying to find out the strength and uh, challenges for each person. Ria says who chooses the right person for delegating job? Uh, Ria, it is you only. <clears throat> you should you should know your juniors. Bhavesh Goyal says what to delegate. Very important question. I will cover that also. Yeah, Avantika says delegation makes us redo the work with additional 
hours on the work, how to avoid that. This is a common problem. Nikita says, how do we communicate clearly to the junior? Very good. So we have got some thought process here. Uh, let me take uh, the slide where I will look at start from our, uh, you know, this what can be expected today. We are planning to see that the meaning of delegation, identifying what stops us from delegating, impact on the stakeholders. Uh, in our office, we have the biggest impact is on myself. Then it is on the office HD itself. We have uh, juniors, we have seniors, we have most importantly, we all work for our clients. And there is also one very important aspect. We are all leaders in this office. Either we are already leaders or we are becoming leaders. We are the future leaders of the country. And therefore, if we delegate and then we can do more work, that would be something which is great. <clears throat> Shilpi is asking, what is the prerequisite of delegation? What groundwork needs to be done before starting? Yes, I'll certainly cover that. So this uh, session should end up with those of us who are not delegating to delegate. Those of us who are delegate delegating already to do it the way it should be done. And all of us should reach our goals, our professional goals. I think Bhavesh Goyal has repeated one question which is there, uh, which was also asked earlier. How to handle situation where the work done is not proper or not done itself? Very important. But the monitoring is a very, very big part of uh, delegation. So Mayank says uh, learn the dynamic of art of delegation, how to bring out quality and deliverables in work assigned. Yeah, this is a common problem which all of us uh, face that the person who is delegated the work cannot do it as well as me. That's a fact. Otherwise, you would not be the team lead, you would not be the manager, you would not be the senior manager, and certainly you would not be the partner. The person who is delegated rarely does work far better than you. But there have been a lot of instances in our office where the people delegated something have done far better than the person who delegated it. In my case, it has been there have been several instances. For example, today, uh, of course, I don't execute today. Let me look at two years back when I used to execute also. I had Many of my juniors who knew GST far better than me, especially the procedures. Say before I went to the Central Council in 2010, I had number of people in our office whose knowledge of uh, service tax was far better than mine. Excise, Central Excise was far better than mine. Though they had joined the office when I had already written a book on excise. They joined the office after that, but their knowledge of exercise became more than mine. So these are the advantages possibly there. Pooja asks how to instill confidence in that delegating. Very good. I will cover all these things today. Uh, my, many of my things are going to be, I will ask you to share, and when you share, I will respond to it. <coughs> Just to put perspective in place, our firm's purpose, vision, mission, vision, mission, and value statement, many of you would have seen. Today we are going to look at purpose and uh, mission probably. So we have decided that we will add value while serving people and uh, we'll do it professionally. Our vision is to see that the type of work we do, the type of persons we are, the attitude we display, the professionalism with which we deal with clients, we'll see that we would be the preferred professional organization and we would be trusted to deliver excellence. You must have heard this many times. Our mission is more relevant to today's talk. So our mission has many things to do, but the one which is most important is to develop knowledgeable and committed professionals as leaders. 
And if we want to do this, we cannot do it without delegation. Delegation is on the job. People learn, they make mistakes, learn from their mistakes, come to know how better to do things and grow. The growth prospects in HNDA have always been, and this is a bit unique to us. Many professional firms do some part of what we are doing. As far as knowledge is concerned, we focus on its application. What is practical? How can we give practical solutions? This is something we focus in all locations. We also encourage everybody to get skilled. In fact, one or two questions are there where we are talking about communication, uh, how to communicate. And this is also something you will build when you don't communicate properly. Work is not done. When the work is not done properly, I, we have to ask ourselves, what is it that I did not do, which resulted in this particular bad quality of work, which I had to redo? Maybe that is very, very important. Introspection when work is not done properly. People skill has become the most important skill in all services, whether it is IT, whether it is our uh, advisory, audit, people skill, because we can't get good people and we can't get them to stick. So what is that? How is that relevant to delegation also is something we'll look at. We are also looking all the time, you know, that uh, one of the aspects which is missed out in most colleges most schools also nowadays is getting the right attitude. Right attitude when I'm providing service to the client, right attitude when I'm dealing with my colleagues in office, boys or girls, with my seniors, How? what is the right attitude? Is it that I should not question them at all? With juniors, should I keep on only telling them what it is or get them to own and enjoy the work they are doing? One of the common aspects which we learn when we work in organization is that you should command respect of your juniors. You can't demand it. I'm your senior. Do it this way. That doesn't work. Now it has not worked in the past also. And when we are delivering value, you, the, the your team should be delivering value in a professional manner. Some of the values which are there in our firm, which I have not, of course, shown today, because I thought I'll just touch on it, is very, very important. Much of it is also there in the code of ethics of either the Bar Council or the ICA. One of the things is that the world is no longer Bangalore or Guwahati or Raipur. It is the whole world. World is available for your clients. It's also available to you. If we work properly, then we can become excellent world citizens. And uh, as it is, the image of India is improving now. It could improve far, far better. What is the expectation of uh, h and with all the leaders, with all the partners, with all the des designated partners and the entire staff. One of the things we are very clear is that we need to be knowledge hungry. We can't be satisfied with the level of knowledge we are at. The day you stop reading, the day you stop analyzing, your growth is getting impacted. One more thing is that in our office, as far as I understood, there is open communication. You can talk to your seniors, you can talk to your colleagues and they'll share because we have a sharing mentality. We also have system by which you can go to any higher level. For example, anybody in h &E can talk to me. In fact, in the uh, new joinees uh, induction program, you could say one part is a talk with me and one of the partners, and we assure them that they can, any one of them can pick up a phone and call me or send me a mail. With me, Mail is very good, but you can call me also. I always call back. So we expect that all of you will be creating a positive environment. Till now, we have no politics in HLA. Though we are 300, we have so many locations. We may have differences. 
we have a lot of differences. In fact, we encourage differences and it comes to the uh, uh, executive committee. It also comes to the partners. Sometimes there is a difference and uh, by vote we close out the matter, which means that there will always be a few people who may not agree with what is being done. One thing we are very clear that this brand which has been built by all of you, the people who have been with us little longer may have contributed a bit more, but that is not essentially so. I have seen our new partners, our designated uh, partners doing much, much better than many of us partners itself. So this is something which is part of HND. I want to understand now what do you understand by delegation? You can put it in the chat or you can also unmute and speak. Please go ahead. And anybody can speak. Huh? Even the articles can speak, staff can speak, qualifieds, anybody. Or put it in the chat. In the meantime, I think there was one more which was there by Yash. Which work to be delegated, which work to be done ourselves? How do we account for the work done? Okay. Last part I may not cover, but the first two parts I'll certainly cover, Yash. Yash, incidentally, is our uh, future partner at Ahmedabad. He will, he will head the branch for a few years till he justifies his partnership. What do you understand by delegation? Can we have a few people share that? Thomas, who we call Joe, says that delegation is sharing the work responsibility. I would agree. Sharing the work responsibility with sharing of authority. Sharing, yeah, Nitesh says, yeah. Prabhalika says, create opportunity to others to learn new things. Fantastic. Actually, this is one of the reasons why we should share. While reducing our work and burden, we are able to create leaders. Saurabh says mechanism of assigning work to juniors in a proper manner. Varun is again talking about empowerment. Empowerment, empowering to act for another. Yeah. So I learn because now somebody is trusting you to do something, trusting me to do something, then I learn something. Yes, says right person for the right job is what delegation is. It's an important aspect of delegation, what Yes says. Fatima says interest to another person, typically one who is lesser, less senior than oneself. Yeah. Normally, yes, but our partners are very sharp. Even they delegate to me also sometimes. It's called reverse delegation. Sharing responsibility and ownership, Pooja Rati from Pune is saying, getting things done from others, correct? Gayatri says something which I like. She says it is the process of growing together. Fantastic, Gayatri. I don't think I have thought of that. I should add it to my article on delegation. Asha says process of developing the team member for greater responsibility. Starting with small share of work. Yes, it should be done in a stepwise process. I need to delegate. See how the work goes, then give more responsibility. See how the work goes. Keep on increasing. I'll give you an example which happened many years back. We had uh, one Rajesh Kumar with us who was the partner next to me. So Rajesh came from a rural background and uh, but he had a lot of qualities which I did not have. He was very humble. His grasping of the subject was fantastic. His memory was very good. All three I didn't have, did not have. I was not humble. I was not able to grasp fast. And uh, memory was not that great. So Rajesh joined. I, I told him you should take up litigation because you are humble. And that's necessary before the officers. In fact, Arvind Datar, a very famous advocate says that one of the first learnings he got from his senior was how to be humble. So Rajesh was a person who came into the litigation department. Initially, he used to do the structure. 
for me. That means he would make the skeleton of the facts and give it to me and he would give me some suggestion on what uh, could be the defense. And uh, I would fill up, uh, I would finish it, then I would give it to him for seeing if there is something he can learn out of that. He would come back and say, this is what I learned. After maybe six months or one year, he, I asked him to start replying to the notices and uh, I would wet in 100% that notice. After some time, I found he was quite good. So I started telling him, OK, less than 10 lakhs, you only will reply. I'll just do English language corrections and send it. After some time, I started giving him bigger responsibility. At one time, there was a time after around two years where I could not make any correction except English language in his paper. Six months by the time he had reached one crore, up to one crore he used to handle. Beyond one crore, Shoka's notice only used to come to me. Then I found that he is, he is bringing in arguments which I cannot think of. That means his knowledge of litigation had crossed my knowledge of litigation. The alternatives he used to come up with and all were so good. So then I said, that is it. I am not going to see your work again. And he became whole and sole in charge of the litigation in Bangalore. And that was so for a, maybe a decade or so. <clears throat> Ajay says giving opportunity to others for sharing knowledge by sharing authority and responsibility. Perfect. Asha says process of developing the team members for greater responsibility. Yeah, that's the one I explained actually. Wonderful. So I think you all have got it, but I'm going to again maybe give a wholesome uh, what the internet says about it, I will tell you. So we look at what is that which, uh, what is delegation as per the dictionary? Many of you have told it correctly. Delegation is normally the assignment and activity to a subordinate, like somebody said. But there is a possibility that it can be delegated upwards also. It places part or full responsibility along with some or full authority. So it depends on what stage your delegatee is. It is a method of working in cooperation. And working in cooperation is one of the most important professional skill. In our office, we do not have all the skills, but we work with so many people. We may not have all the access to all the clients, so we work with many chartered accountants. Amarjit Chopra ji, who was the president of the institute, we have been working for more than seven, eight years in Gurgaon. Recently, we had a, uh, we have, we, we have started working with Singhi and Company, which is also a member of Moore Global, which is an international networking firm. All of you have access to Moore Global resources. I don't know how many of you are using it, uh, but I would urge you to at least go to the network and see what interests you. I'm sure something will. Cooperation, therefore, we can call it uh, collaboration. We can call it networking. Is a basic fundamental for growth. Many of the chartered accountants don't grow because they don't cooperate. They want to work in their own small space. So they are frogs in the well. Not that we are swimming in the ocean, but we are at least in a big lake. So many streams come in and we are working with a number of people. Delegation is linked to knowledge, skill and experience of the subordinate. So somebody had asked me, how do I delegate? How, how do I know what to delegate? That depends on your subordinate. But the main thing we are going to focus on today is the manager. Because the manager should be willing to invest time and effort to update, upskill the team on a continuous basis. In our office, we have the HR department, which has become quite active in the last few months, uh, I would say. And you have so many training. I think even today there's a training on audit uh, and also there's a training on consultancy. So 2020 people are joining that. And we want all of you to have skills, knowledge, to be able to do any of the work in the office, whether it is uh, audit or consultancy, litigation. We want you to get all those skills. 
manager may have to allocate time ensure that they do it and for everything which work is just given reading which is given training which is offered manager should spend at least 5 minutes to find out how his team has benefited by that and you can also give good suggestions to ensure that we are able to get learning done at the highest level it's very difficult to learn and sit like today's session may be more than 1 hour very difficult to concentrate but it is something which is required and many of you are doing ca there is no choice for you but to learn to concentrate so it is also understood as a step by step capacity building of the available resources with the purpose of unburdening the senior why he should be unburdened we'll look at little later the second question i have is what stops one from delegation many of it is there in the question in the sharing which you all have done about what you are looking forward for the team leaders partners designate partners managers senior managers you all can put what is that one thing you are afraid of for doing delegation in a big way any of you delegate yeah asia has hit the nail on the head she says they that if i have to rework then i am thinking why should i delegate so thomas says lack of confidence that the responsibility will be taken seriously that is the person who gives the job will be too strict so what is that what you say i don't think that's the meaning what i can make out let me come back to it yeah so because i mean Nikita's, that yes that yes uh, thomas the, the person may not understand the full consequence of that responsibility so if i'm giving something if the person understands why the what is the consequence of doing the job well then the person will take that uh, delegation seriously i got it yes how to ensure that what you are saying is clear and i'm going to deal with that in this uh, there is a specific uh, para i have put on what uh, joe has raised nikita says it may take me 15 minutes to do the talk, uh, job but it will take me 10 minutes to explain and subordinate will take 30 minutes so finally 40 minutes is taken for a 15 minute job the idea nikita is that if you have 100 jobs and 80 of them are delegatable that is if you explain to the subordinate properly and he is able to deliver it in 30 minutes then 80% of your jobs out of 100 jobs 80 can be done by him or her and that would relieve you because you will you will not have to explain each and every time 10 minutes maybe it will take 1 minute sometimes it's a repeat job if it is a repeat job maybe you don't have to explain it all subordinate will say yes i did this other work for you you say yes do it that way only redoing seems to be one of the major puja also is saying that repetition lesser confidence limited time yes i agree with lavkush that uh, in the initial stages it may look like that you don't have confidence in the junior i gave you an example where the junior is done better than me there is also a very famous saying by general patton you can google general patton and uh, you can put you know delegation he has a very famous saying you can see that lokush limited time sometimes works uh, work is very urgent i am not talking about very urgent works there are always 10% work which is very urgent at which time you don't have the time to explain like nikita says explain the monitor and uh, uh, finish the work and give it to it give it to the client in time but that is not something which happens all the time maybe 10% if you are not working very efficiently maybe 20% uh, pravalika says capability doubt about the capability of the junior and insecurity oh very good that's a very insightful thing you have said pravalika insecurity is i think my job will be at stake if my juniors come up to my level or exceed me 
in fact this is the reason why many managers don't like to take very bright people into their uh, team they think that that person will overtake them uh, it is a fact it is a fact that that is there lack of willingness of the delegating the junior is not willing to take up the work uh, this may be a myth i think because the international research shows that while people may join thinking that they are only come for time pass everybody wants to grow everybody has a dream whether we are able to touch that dream whether we are able to give the spark i would say is the very important uh, aspect for any team leader manager or partner yeah lakshman says i can complete it in less time by myself absolutely lakshman that is the fact but if if you did not have that opportunity given by say sudhir sir first to venkat and then venkat to you today you would not have been designate partner you would have been a clerk everything if they were doing they would have said make the skeleton do this research you don't know you don't you would not have been the such a powerful person who is part of a unique book on case digest mannu says we should delegate you should delegate i should delegate it should be with sharing ownership and responsibility that is very important what is talked about while we say that you should own the job we should also give tell them what are the responsibilities and give them the authority to do it authority to make mistakes each one of us has made hundreds of mistakes seniors among you have done more made more mistakes than you manu also says it comes with its own risk in deliverables but eventually it would create he is giving the advantage also advantage i am going to ask later lack of confidence or right, this is very nice lack of confidence in oneself and fear that one may get replaced i think this was also earlier i think one of the other people had this uh, probably i think insecurity so this is uh, something like a repetition of that gayatri says when they are not willing to learn there is nobody gayatri who is not willing to learn maybe we are not willing to teach properly maybe we are telling them rather than showing them what great work they are doing there is something called uh, you know dignity of labor that means i i explained this in fact in one of the sessions uh, yesterday session that once long back in bangalore there was the toilets were not clean so i mentioned i just came out and said who's that who's dirtying toilets like this not even flushing and i went away i was surprised after one hour when i came back the toilet was just like that so i called the whole office then i asked that one of them to get uh, our receptionist to get a broom and i cleaned all that mess and flushed it it took one minute but there is a lesson in it the lesson is that every work is important there is nothing which is bad work and you if we know why we have to do the work then there is nobody who is not willing to learn we have had office boys we had as receptionists becoming partners office boys becoming uh, equal to partners they have, we have had people from the slum who joined us and who are now practicing uh, quite very well they are in big companies as uh, you know, with responsible positions why have they reached there how did they reach there they all reached there with match of the culture of hnd nikita says our thought blocks where we might be accepting we might be accepting of newer innovative ideas things may be done in a different maybe better manner this is very insightful again i believe that every generation is smarter than the other not genetically not genetically again every generation that means for me in our office most of you are three generations away from me so you are three times as capable as innovative and what she says is correct as we get older innovative ideas become less we are not willing to accept new things whereas when juniors do it they may come up with many new new ideas how to do it better today we have a ongoing challenge of how to use technology to reduce duplicating work in which nikita has been doing some wonderful work 
Yeah, Pooja says rigidity in change of approach of delegator. This session Pooja is for all those people because they think that delegation is difficult. Better not to delegate. So very good reasons given. Let's look at some of the reasons. Some of the myths, some of the myths versus reality, because this is the most important question. And these sessions are the objective of the session, as I had said in the starting, is to create awareness of the meaning of what stops, how it can be done better. So this I've already finished. You can evaluate what whether this is true, really true. Some of you have said that already. Some managers, team leaders, even partners think too much time needed for training and grooming the junior. Many of you have said that. It would take longer to explain correct than doing it myself. Two or three of you have said this also. My juniors do not have competence. This is actually, uh, I would say it's the opposite. Possibly they have more competence than us. They do not have the ability. They may not have been trained, that is for sure, but they have the capability and the potential. They do not have the initiative. I think this is also a misnomer because many of the juniors initiative is much higher, but we have not allowed it to flower. We have not allowed it to flourish. We have suppressed it as managers. Keep quiet. You don't know. Just do what I said. These are not type of instruction which encourage people to take initiative under you. Some of the managers say the last time I had to re redo the whole job. Many of you have said that also. Some managers say, sir, they are not here for learning. They just want to leave at 630. What is wrong if somebody wants to leave at 630? Nothing wrong. Have they done their job or not is what you should be focused on. And this. If somebody wants to leave at the exact 630 time, even though work is incomplete, then it is not their problem. I'm repeating. If somebody in your team wants to leave at 630, though they have not finished the allocated work, then it's not their problem. It is your problem because you have not shown them what is the importance of the work they do for themselves. What is the advantage? Today we are going to touch on those also. Juniors do not have the motivation and devotion needed for quality work. Many of you have touched on it also. But this is not true. 90% at least of the people who join H and A come to learn only. And they also want to develop themselves as better people. While they may get some other benefit, they can get better salaries. They can get a easy job anywhere in any indirect tax department in India, in any company. That is true, but they want to learn. They want to ensure that they do quality work. Have we told them how quality impacts them? How quality impacts you, the team leader? How quality impacts the firm? Maybe then they will have a reason, big reason, that they will never do bad quality work. There are some of us who always postpone things, team leaders and I'm so busy, you know, I'm already working till 7, 7.30 every day. Uh, once things become little cool, then I will start this training and delegating work. We are in our comfort zone. We are doing mediocre work. Anybody who's working late, in my understanding, is doing mediocre work or doing only urgent work, which may not be of great quality. Some of us are only scratching the surface of what we do. We don't get into depth. So these things are something we have to realize. For example, if I'm postponing, I should see that I don't postpone any of the important things in my life, which will help me to grow. Forget about the firm for the time being. Then as somebody else also said, insightful thing which I mentioned, fear that the junior would overtake me. And I'm enjoying this limelight. We have had that with some of the top people in our firm. They were so scared when GST went away. I mean, sorry, central excise all and everything went away because suddenly it became a level playing field. All the juniors became as good as you. In fact, for me, it was a very big 
challenge because most of the juniors knew knew better than me GST in the first uh, maybe year of GST. I hardly knew GST. It's a different matter that I uh, I spread GST throughout India. That is through others. That is the art of delegation actually there. That was a wonderful way of delegating. A few of us could be control freaks. We want everything to be ending up with us. Everything, even a senior but does the work, they have to sit next to us. We will do their editing and then only it will go. <clears throat> In this way, we are actually undermining the junior. Rather, you should look at what the junior has done. Tell them these are the areas of improvement. Give it back to them. That's a better method. <clears throat> Sorry. Some of us, we say that, oh, juniors are working so hard. <clears throat> How do I how do I delegate more? I have already given them so much work. In such cases, I would suggest please go through Q3, which you are doing. Juniors are doing wonderful work learning and you are doing donkey's work or Q3 work. Which is. Something which is not important, which you keep your to do list is so long. I'm a manager. How many things you know? I have 100 things to do. It is not a good good thing to say. I have 100 things to do. Because you have not delegated, you have that 100 things to do. So look at your Q3, all managers. We have had a session on that. It's recorded and kept productivity. I think it's called four quadrants theory or something. Please have a, a look at that video. Read articles on that four quadrants theory. Look at the Q3 activities you are doing, all the managers. Look at Q3 activities and see which of those activities you can delegate. You you need not do it. Your junior can do it as well. Which of those activities you can automate? There you can take the help of Nikita. And there will be some activities which you need not do at all. It's unimportant. Doesn't make a difference. Omit them. Some of the people do, do not uh, fear that the job will fail. Many of you said that. Job itself not done properly and then it comes to the last moment and there is a problem. Again, it could be an issue of improper monitoring. If I monitor at the right time, say I have to give a give a opinion in six days. When the work comes, 99% of the work we get gets confirmed. We need not wait for the client to confirm. We can start the work right away. The junior at least can start the work right away, research, etc. 1% chance that whatever is he or she is doing will not be used that time. But again, later something will come, which is again part of the work you have done. It will never be a waste. So can I start the moment I get the work before even I make the offer or I make the offer and start the work? It may take three days for the client to come back to us. After that, we will ask some information, then it will come back another two days. So these five days is bonus for us. Can I complete my opinion by that time substantially and only finalize it in the next one or two days? So instead of seven days, you can give the work in two days. What will happen to the client? Such a quality work has come in two days. Fantastic form, they'll think. But actually you have been working for seven days. <clears throat> Manager is busy, busy. He or she has no time for family. We have we have many such people in our office. They think that they are doing a great job, but actually in the longer term, it is having an impact on the family. They are not reading or updating themselves, so they are not on top of the subject and feel guilty for it. Certainly they are not having fun. <clears throat> we have to be happy in life, right? We cannot uh, say that, OK, I will work 14 hours a day. Once in a way, it's all right when there is a, you know, when there is some timeline, we have time timelines to meet that time. It's OK, but not beyond that. We have to have fun. We have to exercise, take care of health, etc. Always being approached for advice internally, very, very important. We feel very nice when somebody comes to us for advice. So the way I grew out of this, I also had this. I was so happy that so many people call me and I will tell them I'm busy now. Call me after 10 minutes. He calls after 10 minutes. My phone is busy. So I'm so happy that you know so many people calling me. I'm busy throughout the day. I am doling out uh, 
knowledge to everybody. Then I realize I am not able to read. I am not able to do the big things which I am required to do. That is when I started saying that if there is somebody else in the office who can do it better than me, then I will simply say, I will refer you to somebody. Say it is Arjun. Arjun. I will refer you to Arjun. If you have any problem with him, you come back. The fact is that the client will never in his life again call me because Arjun is so competent. And this is true for 70, 80 people in our organization. Some of them are very good at certain things. For example, if it's an IT issue, I will uh, tell that person, whoever is asking me, uh, please send me a mail and I will forward it to Nikita and tell her, can you talk to the client on this? Have a look. Most of the time she is able to solve the problem in five minutes. Otherwise, I have to understand what has been told and then I will call the client. Nikita doesn't get the credit for it and she her motivation may not be as high as it is today. She is probably going to be our uh, the first non technical that is not non GST partner in our firm. Anyway, it depends on her, I think. The point another thing which is very important is that Minor aspects don't look at. Again, you are looking at Q3. Get rid of Q3 as you rise. Starting, you will have to deal, deal with all those things when you are, say, a team leader. When, once you become a manager, you should reduce those aspects which your juniors can manage. After that, you become a partner, then even further reduce because there are so many long term aspects of uh, growth, etc., which are important. Potential juniors earlier doing very well. Not growing now. This is also something we have observed in our office. That is, there is a potential junior. He has been doing extremely well, growing like anything, taking responsibility, doing suddenly is missing. Not growing now. There is something which has happened. I don't know what. Maybe you have to have a one to one talk with such person. Passion and velocity in office is less than reducing. We can see that. When you walk into an office, you can make out how vibrant that office is. And uh, we have been many times. We have been looked at as the most vibrant CA office in India. Recently, I think there was a group of our uh, qualified some partners also who went to Daman and Diu, and everybody there recognized that this group is something which is amazing, high in knowledge and their camaraderie amongst themselves is fantastic and they are having fun every break. They are sitting together and laughing, talking and you ask them for some GST advice, but, but they give you the best GST advice and many of them called me. In fact, two or three of them are getting mentored by me on saying that how can we make our staff like your staff? No owners, no second line, only developing executors. This is also something which is happening in many, many companies, many, many firms, not in our firm. There are no owners. Everybody is an executor. There's nobody who will take over and manage. You see our office now, many of the people who went from our office, Sudhir was the first who went with hardly anything. He was one of the junior most. I think he was promised partnership even before he became a CA. And you see where Sudhir has gone. From Sudhir's office, at least seven, eight partners have come out. He is a master at delegation. All of us, when we have delegated, we have made some mistakes. Some of them we are going to understand today so that you don't have to make the mistakes Sudhir did, which I did. Those things you need not repeat. And uh, when you do not delegate, then you will see that there is a vacuum coming around. You will not have enough uh, senior managers, you will not have man managers, you will not have uh, team leaders if you are not doing delegation. That's for sure, 100%. I am growing in knowledge and confidence is something which you can keep in your mind if you are doing delegation. There is always this thought process that Many of us, you know, we are very critical about ourselves, especially in the CA course, we get a bit conservative. But the fact is that this bias 
that I am growing in knowledge and confidence. It is, I am a star, is a fantastic attitude, fantastic attitude, because it helps you to keep on growing. It also helps you to keep your juniors so looking up to you. That is something which happens. <clears throat> the only negative in this is, I have learnt enough. That you should guard against. Otherwise, this is a wonderful. We have many people who are stars in our uh, organization. And I keep reminding people, when you evaluate yourself, don't be self-critical. Look at what you have achieved. In fact, as a part of our coaching, I make everybody write 15 things which they have achieved in life and keep it in their diary. Every time they feel that they are not good enough, go and read that. This is an exercise each one of you can do for yourself. You will see you have achieved so many things. Therefore, you're really great in India. You then compare to the Indian population. Then compare to the Indian professional population. Maybe how many people will be there in the Indian professional population? Maybe one crore. In that one crore, where do you stand at your age? In that one crore, say you are 30 and you say, OK, in this one crore at the age of 30. Where do I stand? You will be surprised. You will be one in one lakh, one in 10,000, one in 50,000 maybe. There is where you stand. You are already very blessed and lucky. There could be other situations. I have prepared this uh, PPT with little cut paste also, so there may be some amount of overlap. Uh, working from lack instead of abundance. What is the meaning of this? There is a way in which I can look at everything. I always say when people start arguing vehemently on something, I tell them, what is the lens you are using? Is this lens out of your past? Or is it something which happened which has made you look at everything critically? Why don't you look at it from a positive side? We have one tool called working above the line. If you Google working above the line, you will get that you have a choice to work in two manners. One, you can deny. You can be in inaction. You can, uh, you know, give excuses. You can blame people. This is one way of living, which is a choice. But that's not how leaders behave. That's the way victims behave. So catch yourself if you are behaving like a victim. Does it mean that I don't behave like a victim? I behave like a victim many times. We can look at, look, we can look at above the line. And this image can be even printed out. If you like it, print it out and put it on your table so that every time you, you can catch yourself working below the line. And in Google, you can say lack versus abundance. You will get many articles. Wonderful. I didn't know about this concept till about three years back. Uh, you can uh, Google it and you can come to know what's happening. Today's youth only want fast results are not disciplined or committed. Totally false. Totally false. They may want faster results, but that does not mean that they are not disciplined. When they want, they are very disciplined. When they want, they are very committed. They may be faster than us. They don't do things the way we do. They do in a smart manner rather than a donkey's manner, which I may be doing. Sometimes we think that, uh, you know, some of the youngsters, they are, they have they have grown up in a different environment, especially the 40 plus uh, people like me. Sometimes we think this guy is acting too smart. But we also can see that they are very efficient. So maybe they deserve, you know, being uh, behaving like a smart aleck. Junior not motivated. This is also an input output story. What is the input I have given to the junior that the output is like that? Output not as good of good quality over a period of time. I find the earlier they used to do well. Now they are not doing again. Go back to the reason why it is so. Is there a lack of training? Is it that they are not skilled in something? Are they getting bored with the job? Do they feel that this job is uh, stupid? Check with them. You may be surprised. If you are working, many of us managers are working in Q1, always in crisis, emergency. We have no time. So this is certainly an area where if you are in this area, you you are in serious trouble because you are going to spoil your health and your career, both career also. And in our office, 
if you are not able to create people under you, you can never become a partner. Simple. You may be the most efficient person. We'll keep you as an executor. I, we talked about Q1, which is Q3. Lot of items in Q3. I saw some of our people. 1000, 2000 inbox. That means they have not attended to so many things. Some of us make lists, you know, of things to do. Then we don't look at that list because that list has already become 120. These are all the people in Q3 where stress and, uh, you know, blood pressure, no fulfillment, no happiness is a result. So look at del delegation as a possible thought process. <clears throat> I want you all to share in your personal experience, what is it that you have seen the result of not delegating to yourself, to seniors in the office or our office itself, to the juniors? I'm just looking at negatives of not delegating. Do you have a choice of not delegating is the question which I'm trying to address. If I don't delegate, what happens to the client? What happens to the country? Is there any other stakeholder I have not thought of? So I'm going to give some time for that because this is a very, very important introspection which each and every one of us should do. So can I have uh, some answers again? In the meantime, I think uh, Gagan has said something. Uh, Gagan says he's giving uh, how to delegate. He's giving one advice which I have not uh, come to till now. But certainly what he says is we should see that we give everybody an equal opportunity. We should not delegate. For example, a work comes and uh, there is this uh, blue eyed boy of mine or blue eyed girl of mine. I give all the good work to her and the rest of the team, the other things. That's what he's saying we should not do. We should not have bias when delegation. However, there will always be a client bias. Like for example, the person who is most efficient may be picked up for the most important client. Suddenly we get a you know, listed company coming as a client. Then we will not take the chance of uh, delegating that work to somebody who has just started. Varun Kumar Nair says, team's morale will suffer if I do not delegate. Wonderful. Yes, in fact, people, when you don't give the good jobs to them, they feel suffocated. They feel I came here to learn. I'm not getting any. They don't trust me. They also start fearing, you know, that maybe I'm not good enough and they feel OK. I thought that I can uh, I can grow here, but I'm not growing. Var very good, Varun. Lakshmi says workload on us increases. 100% in fact, one of the purpose of delegating is so that our routine work should get done by others. Whatever work I cannot do, it may be a very high level, you know, finalizing of a appeal. But if there is somebody competent under me, then I should give them the chance to do it. I may still monitor them. That, of course, is another factor which I'm going to touch on. Uh, work couldn't get completed in time. Yes, because I'm not delegating. I have work is keeping on coming and I, I'm not delegating. Uh, having a selfistic attitude, okay, selfish attitude. So that is also there, you know, let me learn, let others not learn, but that proportion may be less uh, Pravalika, but yes, that is there. Monica says that if I don't delegate, the quality will suffer. 100% I agree with you, Monica. If you had done it, you would have done it in two days. By getting it done by the junior, you may get some new points. And you'll refine it anyway when it comes to you when since you are the partner who is finalizing it or the senior who is finalizing it. Uh, Rasika says that if I don't delegate, timely delivery is difficult to the client because too much work is there. Basically, that's what as I get more and more work, if I don't delegate, then I can't give it in time. So every time I have to tell the client, give me extra time or I don't tell him anything and go ahead. Nikita has done a wonderful, uh, she has broken to everything. <laughs> nice Nikita. She says for herself, if she doesn't delegate, she'll be overburdened. For seniors, uh, 
result of not delegating is stressed and non delivery late delivery may be juniors no growth no opportunity and this is very serious juniors you know so juniors in of in our office if there is some problem in delegation you should go to the higher up client late delivery quality missing quality or long term, long term missing will be there because if i try to do everything then i have to do it in a hurry when i do it in a hurry quality may suffer asia says no growth for both junior and senior correct because it's part of life today by not delegating we cannot uh, you know we cannot grow ourselves itself vikram says by not delegating we will be stuck with too many urgent but not important work and it will lead to too much stress and important work will not be done wonderful over a period of time joe says loss of quality of work and total output also yes 100% seniors won't be able to go for to the next level if he refrains from delegation i agree with you fully sir team may feel unmotivated as they are not involved very very important if they are not involved you know there are no use of uh, juniors not delegating means not moving up shilpi says perfect juniors won't get a chance to grow even we can't get a chance to grow if we don't delegate we can't scale our profession uh, mayank says if we don't start delegating we will never delegate uh, that's a very good way to say it which would differ definitely lead to delay in delivering consequently having an impact for the client as well as the firm no delegating no growth perfect nitesh says confidence of subordinate junior may be get may get affected not may will get affected because they think that i am not good enough i am not getting work because i am not good enough asha jain says working with a team is natural synergy benefit which is denied if there is no delegation wonderful you know when you work in a spirit of uh, cooperation and support to each other which is one of the important part of delegation then there is a velocity people just love to come to work when they get up in the morning they are thinking when will i get to work so that i can do something useful odumber says quality of work will suffer correct contribution by entire team suffers which is correct under utilization of capacity this is also something which is a higher level thought process by sai krishna because the capacity of all of you is unlimited we are all unbounded we are only restricted by this environment around us our seniors can impact it our uh, society can impact it our clients can also impact it but as i said when we work above the line then we have a choice not to get impacted by anything but take responsibility make ourselves more accountable make ourselves better so that we can do the work fantastic thank you for that wonderful sharing by all of you let us look at some of most of what i am going to tell will already be there but there may be some higher level thought process especially for the partners and the partner designates and those of you who are going to be future partners either in our firm or in any other firm those of you who are going to become cfos in industry one some of the results of not delegating which we have discussed earlier is that talent attraction will disappear they will, people will come only for salary in our office people come because they want to learn people come because they want to develop they also come because the salary is reasonable maybe not as big as the big four or maybe even half the big four salary but they come not only for salary but they come for others so if we don't have delegation nobody will come simple what will they learn if from a boss who doesn't delegate other than that of course there are other reasons our brand is good they can get a better uh, access but we wouldn't have made a name at all if we had not delegated well talent engagement which i think many of you have mentioned morale will be low if we do not delegate people will be leaving us if we delegate well you can increase the retention not that people will not leave people will leave because my dream may not be the dream of the firm and you need not have the same dream when you are with us we urge you to have align to our dream so that you work effectively enjoy your work and go a much much better person much much bigger leader 
Insecurity on both sides will be there if you don't delegate. The delegate, the manager also will be insecure, and the obviously the delegate, the junior will be uh, insecure. And this lack of dependency, if I don't depend on you, why should you put your best? When I depend on you and trust you, then you have no choice. You have, you are bound internally to do great things for me. Inadequate knowledge and skills, because have, none of us have time to improve ourselves, improve our skill, improve, update our knowledge. And uh, quality of work will suffer because of not delegating which I think many of you have also said, lower productivity also you have said. Right in the beginning, somebody has talked about trust F deficit, and when there is a trust deficit, that dill, you know, the heart is not in the work. Whereas that heart has to be in the work. If you have to enjoy, we have to enjoy, and we, both of us should to grow. I think many of you have already shared the uh, advantages, but I will quickly give two, three minutes for people to put what advantages they actually saw when they started delegating. This partners can give, seniors can give, anybody who has been a manager and has an experience of what he or she got out of delegation can be put here. Three minutes I'll give. I think we are running out of time. Quickly, please. Either you can speak or you can put motivated team, correct? Certainly, it's a, one of the best ways. You know, when you tell your team, you're doing as well as me. I think this opinion you have done, if Shilpi tells uh, Monica, this opinion you have done, I can't find a single mistake. In fact, I think there are many points here which I wouldn't have thought of. After that, uh, you know, Monica is now waiting to do much, much better. Innovative thinking, enhanced sense of ownership, synergy benefits. Yes, certainly. Synergy benefit is that two minds, three minds getting together. Each time delegation, oh, so many are coming. I think three minutes may be insufficient. Let me try and cover everything because I'm not too good at this. Uh, more learning questions asked by new, juniors never thought. I have heard many times. I have changed my opinion because of the questions asked by juniors. Each time delegation is a chance, I give myself to do a different job, creating more value addition at my level and a chance for the other person to have confidence to execute the work and learn more win win for both of us. Yeah, you caught it, uh, Asha. Actually, it is a win 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 win, which I will explain in the last if I get time. Getting a new perspective, which I never thought of. This is what happens and this is what I have observed in my life where people have delighted me, amazed me with the type of work they have done. They may be even at article level. Amazing. Many times I say some of our articles, third year articles are better than a CF fresher. Work which was always postponed got completed. Huh? Getting introduced to capability of team members. Yeah, if I if you don't give me a chance, how do how do you know what I'm good at? Maybe I'm very good at our thinking out of the box. Like uh, Nikita says, then if I get an opportunity, I'll do that. Higher sense of responsibility leading to far better work, synergy. Uh, Pravalika says work gets completed without the managers. Of course, that is the purpose of delegation. After some time, nobody bothers. You do it, I'll just sign. Or you will give the signing also to you. You know, in our office for the last 20 years, every partner can sign the checks. The checks are not, uh, you know, uh, only with check signing is not with only the senior partner or me or whatever. In fact, I think I sign very few checks. We have some checks and balances, of course, where larger amounts, there are two people who sign. But the point is you trust people and they will give you back. They'll amaze you with the loyalty. Increase knowledge, Fatima says, improve quality among team members. Lakshman, that is the purpose. Delegator can concentrate on bigger things, longer term thought process. For example, if Lakshman becomes free, he will become a master at the Constitution of India. He may become a master at the legal maxims which are there throughout the world. Vinay Kumar says reducing work pressure and creating future opportunities with innovative tax completion process. Yes, we have observed this also. Many of you have come up with you know, better ways of doing things. 
get time for other learning within the team. Huh? That's also very important. Delegation will ensure that you have time to sit together and maybe every week. Many of our teams do that. They have a one, one and a half hours team time where they sit together and discuss something, learnings within. We also have that monthly KM, which is a, a summary of all these learnings. Our teams develop, develop as professionals, leaves a positive impact on entire office. That's right, Asiya, where everyone is learning and growing and uh, everyone is satisfied. We are all here to fulfill some purpose in our life. Let's look at uh, some of the things quickly I look at. Maybe some of this is a little higher level, but I have purposely thought of higher level things also in level in uh, because I have been forced to do this thanks to this opportunity given by uh, whoever wanted me to speak on delegation. The first part is very clear, but it's also self actualization. All of us should grow. We should come to know the meaning of life. The meaning which we give ourselves in the starting of life, in the middle of our life, in the towards the end of our life could be all different, but everything is a process of self actualization. Creating leaders has been our motive, which is, I think, uh, very clear from all whatever you have said that it is something which happens. Cure quicker response time. Many of you have observed that while some people feel it will take more time, many of you have observed delegation actually leads to quicker response time. Delighting clients, more work for us. Long term continuation of quality service is what delegation leads to proper delegation. We can also attract the best talent and many of you have said the uh, you know level of satisfaction within office. It is uh, you know it, it's a wonderful booster. Part of building the second line successor new branch partners as far as our, our office is concerned. Improved efficiency as using strength of others which we lack. I am not having all the qualities for a firm to be great. But I have got this huge bunch of talented partners, designate partners, qualified articles who are making good all my deficiencies. That's how we work and we deliver. Learning from our mistakes. This is something which many times we fear that delegation will lead to a lot of mistakes, but we can learn without without making mistakes. Nobody can learn. And also there will be a higher connection to the firm, better retention. Build trust in ourselves. When I take a call and I say, OK, this job I will give it to Mahadev. I know that once I give it to Mahadev, it will be done in a very nice manner. Client will be very happy and the result will be done in time. He, he probably follows his mentor Srikanth in that. Pride in that, pride in the firm. And all this leads to high, higher value for ourselves. We are actually building value for ourselves. Be an be a influencer first in the firm, then in the community of chartered accountants, then maybe to the world itself. Leave a legacy for ethical contribution, contributing professional firm. This is especially in our firm. Somebody had talked about win-win. There can be four to six wins. Win for the manager, partner, or organization, employee, client, country, profession. I don't know. Plus plus when we do this delegation, there can be so many advantages. There are many management styles. In fact, if you Google management styles, you'll get many. I felt uh, the nearest I could see many of our partners have unique management styles, but one common management style we have is this coaching management style. Where. Because we delegate our managers, partners can get a world view. Now we are part of the Moore International. Many of our partners are taking up initiatives which are uh, you know, aligned to Moore International. So we are going, we are taking the best parts of the international community, learning from them, their practices. All their practices may not be exactly applicable in India, but we are learning because we have made time for ourselves. We are delegating and taking up more work. Some of the other thing I thought uh, one of the things which we need to remember statistics says 75 percent of the employees in this world want more responsibility, whereas we think that they don't want 
responsibility. They are shirking away from it. Maybe they are shirking away because they think it's a boring, boring work. It's not important. If we can show them what is important, then it will be better. Be prepared to let go of repetitive works. Then slowly move to the very responsible work. The delegating overtaking me is my best validation of being a wonderful leader. We see category work a lot based on strength of individual. Some of you have asked, how do I know what is that which is his strength? That you should know as a manager. The person working under you, the team working under you, you should know what they are good at, what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses. Can you help them to strengthen their strengths? Is a question you should ask. Can I help him to overcome his areas of weakness? That is what a manager should be doing. One underlying feature which we have believed is that everybody, the minimum amount of time I should train myself is 15%, whether I am an article or I am a partner. What we have done is we have given access to the knowledge. It's there in this website. If you're looking at empowerment, it's there in the empowerment segment. Otherwise, also in GST, the amount of information we have on our website is wonderful. If a client wants to know something while giving the explanation, you can also tell him go to our website. This article is there. I'll send you the link. <clears throat> and we all want to enable our infinite capacity. So this training is a way of unlocking your capacity, unlocking my capacity. When I train some portion, I also unlock some capacity of mine. For example, if I had not got this opportunity of taking this session, I wouldn't have gone into the type of depth I went when I was trying to prepare this. And there were at least 10 things which I mentioned here, which were which were my learning when I went prepared this. How we have to do is initially we have to handhold people. We can't throw them into the pool and let them drown. Teach them a bit, then let go. Monitor them all the time. Monitoring also depends on how much monitoring. Some of the people would were asking, uh, I give the job, then it is delayed and comes back to me. Why don't you have an interim monitoring? How is the person progressing? Say there is, you're given three days time to prepare an appeal. And uh, after one day, ask where, where are you? After second day, uh, are you on track? So that you won't be surprised on the third day that the person has not even started because he's confused. If he follows the SOP, making kernel, etc. This part, this point also can be, okay, need not be a challenge. Guide them. Don't do the work yourself. If there is, if you have time, for example, I have done this very, very regularly. I remember when we wrote the service tax book, I am saying we wrote it, actually Sudhir wrote it. Sudhir, I think was frustrated. One chapter, he sent it to me seven times. In fact, he asked me also, Sir, what is this? Every time you are sending it back. I said, send, do it, no? follow, the, follow the process. But after he went through this trial through fire, the rest of the chapters he was able to do much faster. And I think I would have only seen the rest of the chapters once or twice maybe. Whereas the first time I sent it back seven times with comments. After that, I asked Sudhir what happened. I need not have asked him because his knowledge of service text became almost equal to mine in that one attempt of writing a book. Finally, you should be hands off, only final waiting and maybe no waiting at all. Then you can give them the power to sign. Of course, you may need to be a partner or in our firm because we are a little of afraid of the code of conduct also. <clears throat> Seniors also should train and monitor the juniors. Don't leave it to the HR only. These are some thought processes I have. <clears throat> All of you are aware I am mentoring and uh, not mentoring, I should say professionally coaching many of the leaders in our firm. And I am quite okay to coach more provided they give the commitment. What are the common errors to avoid? Vague instructions. Don't simply give the job and say, okay, prepare the opinion, complete the audit and come back. Tell them why it's important, If especially if you are giving smaller level work, explain why that is important. What is the expected income outcome? What are the resources which are available to that person? What is the time within which it has to be done? 
what are the tools mandatory to be used? What are the tools optionally can be used? What is the quality expected? And what are the measures which are there to monitor that? Validation measures. In the sense that if it is a new uh, new new appeal, new opinion, then we have a, a method of peer review. Some other partner or some other qualified will see. Even we have a third party expert reviewer. Some of the people have asked this question. How to pick the right person? Now that is your decision actually. You have to ensure that everybody in your team is getting trained all the time. In fact, the trainees, we call, art, uh, we call the articles interns because they are continued learning. Train them, give them some uh, exposure, let them become experienced. One of the errors which people make is either no monitoring or micromanagement. Everything they are poking their nose into. So both are not correct. You have to monitor depending on the level and the quality delivery of that junior. You can give more and more liberal uh, attitude, give them more and more authority. But micromanagement is something which some managers do. They are always worried, so they keep poking their nose too many times. Uh, this balance, I think you as managers have to learn. Wrong tasks. What if I give the wrong task to the wrong person? For example, I'm not good at many things. So even though I may be the top of h and if you give me some work, I may be a total disaster, which even our office boy can do better than me, I will not be able to do. Why? Because you are not giving me the task which is my strength. Take advantage of my strength. And that is how managers can avoid this common error of not taking. I should first of all know my team. What is the strength of that team? What is the strength of each of the person in the team? Then I can use their advantage. If I don't know it at all, then that's bad luck actually. It's not good management also. Not giving work where they can learn when they are free. For example, we find many times it's not that all the time there is work. You know, this time in between the filing of return, people are generally free. Can you give them work where they can learn something? Think about it. This is a experience building without any pressure. Aram say they can do. You are also Aram say you can see what they have learned. Ask them in the end of it. What did you learn from this? Ask them to go on, uh, say, the uh, advanced GST uh, video. Ask them to watch it one and a half hours. After that, you call them and ask them two minutes, ask them two questions. No evaluation of capability or interest area of the person. This is a common error. Anybody joins, OK, start doing this. Find out what they need. Maybe they have some interest area. Give Try see if you can accommodate them. Not giving any authority. That is that micromanagement type. Very, very important sharing credit. Everywhere in the conversation which you have, uh, wherever you possible, please mark your subordinates and give credit. For example, one of your juniors has done a wonderful job. You can send a mail to your senior saying that please find and close to the uh, uh, you know, opinion, draft opinion for your review. I would like to mention here that Audember has done a wonderful job here. Karan will say, I am very happy to say that two of the juniors have actually given new thought process to this entire thing and they should put BCC those juniors. What will happen that time is your, your team gets energized. Sometimes we have multiple bosses, too many people asking questions about the same job. That can be, you can try and avoid it. Unfair allocation, I think somebody had touched on this of opportunities and challenges, but remember, don't assume this because there are other things which are important. Profession is here to serve the client. It is not here to serve the staff. We are all here to serve the client, every one of us, whether it's a partner or the staff. So what is good for the client? I may have some unfairness when I allocate. Other than that, I think we should be, uh, you know, we should look at uh, being fair. Partners on call, can you share some uh, few more things? We have very less time. I may be extending this session by 10 minutes. Please bear with me. Partners on call. Any errors which you think you do in delegation, which uh, you would like to share? 
not only partners, even uh, des designated partners, seniors. Yeah. Ravalika says over. What does he mean? What do you mean over? Timing of delegation is also important. Yes, as people grow, you can give them more uh, important, more complex work. I agree with you. Delayed delegation. Yeah, delegate as soon as possible. That's why Gagan, I said, if I get an opinion, when I used to be in opinions, you remember at one time I was the opinion uh, long time back, of course. Uh, the moment I get work, I used to allocate it to somebody so that they do it. They start to, after that. I'll make the offer two days later. It will come. Then I'll ask for information. Viren says lack of clarification. Instructions are very important. We have to give clear instructions. And if you think that the person who you are communicating to the junior has not understood, ask them to repeat it. Tell them, can you repeat what you think I said? I think Ashish wants to say something. Ashish. Sir, one thing, one thing. Yes. yes. Uh, not necessarily as a common error, error, but while, while we are delegating, we are delegating one, aspect one aspect we should, we should always keep in mind to assess the strength of other person. And we should uh, originally uh, alert as per the strength of that person so that that person start getting confidence in himself or herself. At the same point of time, we need to look at what are the limitation of that person. And uh, I would say silently or whatever, we should act on as a facilitator to overcome those limitations so that over the period that person would, uh, uh, I would say, uh, find himself perfect in all the way. So that could somewhat we could look at more proactively while delegating the things. Yeah, actually I've covered that in detail. Everything you said has been covered, but it is good that you are reiterating it. It's so important as a partner or a manager. Errors could be, yes, says being impatient on the pace of their grasping capacity. Yes, it could be there, but impatience is not necessarily a bad thing for a manager to have. Uh, I have put some other thought process into this, uh, which I which you can read. There are some quotes I would like to end up with. When you dele delegate tasks, you create followers. When you delegate authority, you create leaders. This is very important to understand. It's not only telling what it is, you have to give them some authority also. That part authority, when we give jobs, is very important. Deciding what not to do. I was talking about Q3, right? When me as a partner is involved in Q3 more than 10%, then there is something seriously wrong. Whereas for a person who is doing a clerical work, Q3 may be 80%. <clears throat> Leadership is the art of getting someone to do something you want done because they want to do it. So how will you do that? Ask the question why? Tell them how it is so important, how it is important to the client, how it's important to affirm that you do this job well. There are many quotes by many, many others. Ronald Reagan, George Patton, Richard Branson on delegation, which I would like you to watch. So the last part, 10 minutes, what I wanted to extend was top one specific insight or learning. Can you put it in the chat? What, today's thing, what you did not know earlier or what was your learning today? What was your understanding today? One thing, can you quickly put? Then of course, the last question will be done. <clears throat> in this last 90 minutes, what is it that you got? What is your takeaway? Please put. Delegate you overtaking delegator is the best validity. Yes, actually this happens and you feel so proud about it. Everyone is willing to learn, but we have to kindle the spirit. Wonderful. Junior is more ready to take up. It's our mis misconceptions that they are not 100%. Actually, they want it. They may not exhibit because they think that you will burden them then something. They may have their own small, small wrong thoughts. Lavanya says, I want to grow along with my team so that I have to. So I have to start delegating. Wonderful. 
Anjali says proper delegation increase confidence in juniors. Yes, non delegation leads to vacuum and limits growth of our organization. 100%. Uh, Vikram, Vikram, V I C R A M. I don't know. Proper communication is important. Delegation authority will make future leaders 100%. That is the way. Believe them more than they deserve, also, they may amaze you. Proper delegation requires organization for the delegator. Yes. Delegator has to be organized, have faith, monitor. He has to, he or she should put enough time aside. Unnat says continuous delegation leads to growth. Acquainted to the junior's perspective of the work, Rasika says, yes, very important. Delegation is the pathway to grow together. Yes, it is. Building of confidence and completion of delegation work on time. Yes. If we are willing to put that little time, we'll never have delayed work. Just because we delegate, but that is a fear everybody has. Delegation helps to grow together. Dele delay in delegation of work leads to delay in delivery of work. Yes, 100%. That's a long term thing leading to short term impact. Reduction of time, Robin says. Training is an important agreement uh, ingredient. It's not important. It is essential. If you do not train, you can't delegate. Simple. Uh, execution time is reduced. Teaching the importance of work before delegating. This is very important what Akshay said. Once I know why I'm doing what I'm doing, then that work is inspiring me. No? It's not work anymore. It's enjoyment. Monitor does not mean micromanagement. Correct. We did, you know, in the time when uh, we had this pandemic, uh, we had to micromanage uh, because of the situation. Kavya says you will get different perspectives if you delegate 100%. Rishik says, very nice, he says that something like a skin, something else. Let me see if I can catch it. Uh, where is that? Sorry, I'm not so good at this computer. Not able to get. My God. Now I've got too much. Sorry. I think uh, Rishik said something and I tried to get it back. Not getting. Maybe I have to ask somebody else to do it. Huh? Ah. Anyway, I think I'll go ahead and not search. Go ahead. Ah, here it is. Delegation is as important as shedding of skin is to the snake. Growth on both sides. Wonderful. Delegation helps to improve professional ethics and performance. Wonderful. Yes. Gain confidence over a over period of time in the uh, delegating. Yes. And uh, what happened again? Oh, there is so much. I think we may have to stop now. Even my five minutes is getting over. Achieved seeing happy and cheerful faces. Our team develops as professionals. Reducing work pressure and create, creating future oppo opportunities. Wonderful. You've gone to the older messages, sir. You should come down and go up maybe. That will be better. Come down to the last message and go up. Okay. Let You've me gone see. to the old messages. Last one, Keshav, is it? Delegating gains confidence in self when given complex tasks. Yes, give them something which can challenge them. There are different type of people. Okay, What we had said, look at each people. Ashish also said that. Look at what is that person. There are some people who love challenges. You give it to them, then they'll come out with something which you couldn't have got. <clears throat> so last, I wanted to check out with all of you. I think all of you should go through the uh, feedback which has come, which has been amazing for me. How do you feel now? Tom, you can give a thumbs up and close, or you can give a thumbs down. Let's see what it is. Everyone, how do you feel today? Was it of uh, great value to you? For me, when I prepared this, it was a great, great value. And of course, even in this session, I got a lot of value. So thank you very much for your generous listening, I will say. And, uh, you know, 
it feels nice that so it was so involved and many of you gave a uh, lot of additional insights to all of us thank you very much have a wonderful uh, weekend bye everybody